let's pray that we don't have technical difficulties. Facebook. Okay. Twitch works. Good, good. Okay. Twitch works. Uh, Lex, you. It's it's usually better to. I think in this case it 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 might be better to listen to Twitch. Because there is always a delay between voice chat and and uh, and stream, so when I give specific advice on something, uh, the delay might be difficult to uh yeah work with when when i talk about compare that to that and on the screen you see something different <laughs> however there will be uh, especially after the stream possibilities to um talk about sketches um and in between um Quote unquote assignments, there will be time for questions uh, and stuff like that. Okay. Um, I think everybody got notified, and everybody who wants to be here is hopefully here. Okay, is, is there, uh, I call it assignments. Uh, but it's just stuff you can do. <laughs> you don't have to. I hope everybody who wants to draw along has their tablet or uh, a pencil ready. Akio, it's it's called flight school. There is school already in the in the name. <laughs> I mean, I, you can also just watch. That's totally fine. Nobody, nobody has to do this. Oh, that pun! Oh. Good, good. I see people have their pencils ready. Okay. Um, I will also post everything uh, I, I I do here later into on on Discord, and I might also post there uh, some other stuff for um, uh, offline sessions when people want to do more a little bit of the stuff with the techniques we talk about today. Okay, let's start and um, first of all welcome to the first Palestream flight stream, um, flight school stream, bleh, words are hard, um, where we go over uh, specific parts of art education with a focus on paleo art. So I, I show you the basics, uh, me and maybe a few other people, um, the basics of um, of drawing um, and other uh, uh, other fields that might be interesting for for a um, beginner paleo artist, and um, then we show examples 
and how to apply the stuff and you guys can draw along if you want to. For this you don't need any special equipment whatsoever. Um, in this case, in this specific session, uh, the community vote decides that we will talk about proportions. How to get the proportions of your creatures right. Which is, to be honest, a big issue because when you look on online, uh, there are oftentimes animals with, with beautiful textures and details already, but the proportions are just wonky because the people never learn to replicate um, the correct um, sizes of different elements of a creature to each other. And that's where proportions are. They, they are the relationships, the size relationships between different uh, 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 elements of um, an object, a creature, a landscape, whatsoever. Um, there are, there is a tool you could have bought or, or maybe you have one actually, um, that can be extremely handy to use here and this is this little thing here, you get it for, for 10 euro on Amazon I think, it's a proportional divider which is extremely helpful but very very few people actually use it anymore. It was uh, invented during the Renaissance by um, uh, people during during the time of Leonardo da Vinci and um, you can basically use this to replicate proportions extremely accurate on paper. So you, you hold this little thing here in front of you that looks uh, a little bit like, like a scissor with pointy ends on, on, on both sides and uh, you hold it uh, in front of you and uh, this smaller part here um, you look how for example how how um, how broad a face is and then you have the same at on this side basically then you do that with the same with the height and again here you have then the, the, the correct um, the correct length or rather the cor correct proportion between these two measurements just in a different size which can be extremely um, helpful for these things. However, I know most people don't uh, have this stuff so we go over some some techniques today how you can do all these things without this fancy little tool. However, if you uh, really want to be very accurate in your proportions this is the way to go, especially uh, also when you um, draw from models or um, uh, want to uh, scale stuff down and up. Okay, we start with something simple, Dimetrodon, or specifically its skull. I'm opening here a new layer for this. Um, how we gonna do this? Let me zoom into the skull of Dimetrodon and I will also post this specific skull I use here on Discord. So people don't can um, copy paste that on their own canvas or quickly print it out or if you, they just want to look at it like that. Okay, so how do we replicate the proportions of the skull of Dimetrodon? Um, we start by looking at length and height of this wool thing. So we compare, oops, yeah, okay, right layer, make it a little bit larger. We compare the length to the height. In this case, it's good to basically take your pencil and measure with it. Oh no, I don't want to open sculptures. So go away. I don't want to sculpt right now. I need a separate. Wait. Uh, I need a separate tool for this. Getting a pencil. So you you take your pencil and with it you you measure how high the skull is, and then you compare it to its length. 
And then you see that put a uh, basically um, I have right here is whoop there is where my pencil ends from here to here and then I do that once more and you realize that the skull of Dimetrodon is okay yeah so the it's it's too too small for for that the, the layer but you realize that the skull is basically um one and a half times longer than it is high that are is your your base your base ratio basically for this so you have here a basic length by the way do this with very very um you do it with a hard pencil if you work on paper or with a with a very um uh, with with very soft touch to it so no no hard lines yet so have the random lengths on your on your canvas here uh, and then uh, oh wait no basically first the height because that was the first thing we did and then one and a half times that this is your basic ratio for this and I made the half a little bit too long but that's okay this is not to make it completely photorealistic so what do you do next this is with upper and lower jaw combined by the way you look where is the highest point on this um, razor let's let's have a look where is the middle the middle is roughly here and the middle is just in front of the orbit so you look at your lower length here and you mark your your middle make a soft line to the front and then you know where the highest point basically of your um, the highest point is also in this case here the, the top of the orbit and it is the front edge of the orbit which is very helpful also you see here that the oops wrong layer that the orbit is here the same um you you can basically double the orbit and it's uh, the thickness of the skull in this case. Um, and here you you see the uh, and that's basically here the the middle of your of the skull overall. Where also you have uh, the jaw joint. So you put in here the orbit. And you know here is where it meets the edge of the jaw. You see then here how this curves here towards the jaw joint, and you can replicate this. Try, uh, there, there is no way around this. You you have to measure it with your eye. And you can see here that um, there's basically a gentle curve going from the back of the skull here towards the front until here basically uh, the eye the orbits diameter again in front there is where this curve basically ends so you put it in this helps you a great deal And now you can see you have here the, the nose and from there it's not really a straight line but you can put a straight line in at first to to give you um, some idea where it should go and then you can go make it a little bit more uh, make a little bulge here and then go below that 
and then bring it bring it home. And from this you can also see here the we can now put in the, the curve of the upper jaw. I think we have to make the orbit a little bit higher. Um, if if it doesn't work right away, the way it should look, just go in and and correct stuff. Okay. Can also put in some some teeth now. Great, now let's have a look at the lower jaw. And put in, uh, let's see, we have here the middle line. And when we basically divide this part of of it again into two halves, then we have here the bottom of the lower jaw. We can have a diagonal in here that gives you an indication where it's where it's supposed to go. I feel like there was a wool. Uh, skull now is a little bit stretched out. Uh, I think the initial ref uh, measurements were probably not quite correct, but it's more, it's it's closer to the actual thing than just going by feeling, oftentimes. Um, you can go just by feeling, but it's, but it's very difficult. It, it, it needs um, experience. So it's better to first go by by your measurements and later um, when you are experienced, you you just scribble that on paper without even a reference. I can scribble you a Dimetrodon skull on paper without looking at the skull. But I looked at skulls of Dimetrodon for more than a decade. So you can see here the middle line again. So we can... There should be something going over the middle line. And then going down here. And after this secondary middle line going a little bit up again and down. And now it, you, you see it doesn't quite fit, so we go a little bit deeper. Um, and this gap here is basically on the same height as this, so you can go in I yeah, see you, you you try to to see the relationships between different parts of the anatomy see uh, try to see patterns in there and uh, now you can basically go in and and add details but also begin to See okay where where did we screw up where where did I screw up especially here and um, correct that if you want. Uh, it's also helpful to divide your skull into different forms like this for example this portion here to see okay how how what this need to look like. For example, I, I think we, we, we matched this part quite well, but I feel like the, the front part here of the skull became a little bit too elongated. So we make it a little bit higher here. And a little bit shorter. There we go. Then we also move the notch a little bit to reflect that. 
and see it always already feels more like Dimetrodon this way. This is, as I said, the easy stuff. Um, I made it a little bit more complicated than it has to be, but this is the, the most rigorous way you can go about this. Seeing things, comparing things. Um, let's see if there are questions. Otherwise we move on to a new animal. A uh, question, f um, uh, Ryron. We can also you can also ask this now. There is um, this tool uh, on GIMP for for counting pix pixels and the length and height of everything. I don't really recommend it for this because this is more about ratios and not about the actual length of things. It can. It is sometimes it can help if you want to really really accurate. When you want to have it on a on a met mathematical scale, but yeah. Um, Ghost of Coprolite. We will do something like that for the last one. Uh, but um, when it comes to proportions, we will also talk about proportion uh, uh, perspective. I mean, we will also uh, talk about perspective probably in the next stream. So um, what you learn now about propor uh, proportions, you can then apply in in a 3D space, basically. Yes, I said ratio. Ratios are very important here. Let's get rid of Dimetrodon and move over to our beloved <laughs> Cotyledonius. Okay, let's move Cotyrinthus a little bit up here. So now the question is, let's do um, the wool animal, not just the skull. Now the question is, how do we do that? How do we replicate these proportions? Well, let's have a look at this animal. Um, if this guy had a decently sized head, I would use the head as a base measurement here. Because what is really always helpful is take one part of your your animal and use it as a as a as a as a, as a scale bar basically. In this case, however, the head is so small that you can easily be thrown off. In, in your count and everything. So instead we will use the depth of the torso as a base measurement and work our ourselves um, up from there. So how the, 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 the torso is our one measurement. Oop. New layer or new piece of paper. This is our torso now and now we see okay how um, now we know how, how deep it will be on our paper but how long is our torso. So we take again our pencil. Oh I should also again for those who, who want post this skeleton on Discord. Coming, coming in. Why is it so slowly? There you go. Um, so you, we, we now have our our base length of of one torso depth, 
but how long is the torso? So we take again our pencil, take our torso depth as as uh, measurement, and then we okay. This is f we 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 measure from the uh, from the chest down to the pelvis. So one torso is. Uh, uh, it's a little bit difficult because there's a gap. You can you can orient yourself on on the ribs. Two torso depth, and it's two and two thirds torso depth in length. So going back on the layer. One. Two and then if you divide this into thirds, basically this again. This is our torso length now. We can see that it when we box this in, we can see how it goes up here and down here, and we can use this basically this negative space here in the box, which is mostly in our heads to figure out the form of the torso. It also helps to have like here again these middle lines. Also to mark yourself the highest part of the, the torso. And now we have the torso and now we can take the torso length and compare it to the tail length. So we take one torso length whoop, and compare it to the tail and we see they are pretty close in length. There is um, a little bit going over it which I will not even uh, uh, attempt to put into words. You, I would suggest to just eyeball it for now. I will move a little bit my sketch here and zoom out a little. And then we take again on our paper the torso length we already have. Oh, I have to. It's it's always good to move and um, to take big big piece of paper for these move our the sketch, then take the torso length, add the torso length oh my because I moved my, my layer it's now too small <laughs> uh, let's make, make the layer a little longer Take torso length again, and it's around here. So add that much more tail, and a little bit, roughly like this. Now we know the rough proportions of torso and tail together. So we have most of the thing. Difficult it becomes when we look at head and neck because we can't really use any of these measurements for this. What we can use now, however, is the size of the shoulder blade, which we figured out by drawing the front of the torso here. This basically. Um, because when you compare that height to neck and head together it's basically the same and when you look at neck and head you realize they are basically the, the neck is one head long and that gives you an idea for that part of the animal
which also put into perspective how bizarre the proportions of these animals are. Uh, by the way, if you want, you can also already put soft tissue on top of that. This doesn't have to be a skeletal drawing. Um, so, oh god, it fills basically the whole canvas. <laughs> I think I make it a little bit smaller. Bloop. There you go. Making it the lines here a little bit thicker. Okay. Also interesting when you look at the skeletal drawing again here, you see that the, uh, I, I, I drew over it quite a bit already, that the skull length is corresponding basically to the length of your feet. Which is very handy for adding the limbs in this case. You can't really see the humerus here, but it, it's ah, wrong tool. It's roughly here, and then it touches the ground a little bit below the thorax and then the foot is one skull length. Putting some muscles on top here. Similar we look at the pelvis here. The pelvis is ending here and it is roughly when you look at it again the head neck length or the scapular length here is similar to um, the pelvis length. So in the, a little bit over the middle here you have down here is the pelvis uh, and it goes up to here roughly and here in the middle we have where our um, femur comes in. Again we see it from the side so it's not really visible and then going down here is a diagonal for the leg where we then add the foot that is roughly one skull length. And so we have the proportions for our cotyloryngeus. This is now on a very messy, sketchy layer. I will open another layer, make this transparent and draw over it again to flesh it a little bit more out. You guys can in the meantime refine your own sketch if you want. Also have a look at the proportions of skull. Here the eye is roughly in the middle. And after that we will continue and in the meantime look at some questions if you want. Just really quickly. Uh, by the way, in the term of musculature and so on, we will probably have that in a in a stream at some point. But um, for the moment, talking about specific anatomy and so on is not really worth it. It's more important now that you get your um, your basics down. Because it's it's much better to first learn how to accurately reproduce proportions than to go in and um, uh, basically have the most amazing details with the most boring composition and the most wrong proportions, because that's not really worth it. 
Uh, Campbell, what uh, what ratio between between what? And yes, Batman, this uh, file here I'm using comes from Peters, but the nice thing is that Peters puts these things together. Um, nothing on here uh, on the reference I use comes from Peters. The skeletal drawing isn't from him. The photo isn't from him. I think the skull drawing is also not from him. Um, I think the only thing that comes from him is are these drawings of the feet, and we are, don't use that. So and now I can turn down the the layer of the of the little underlying sketch, and we have our little cotyledonous inches. The torso. Oh, the torso. The torso is. Um, uh, when we use the height of, let me do this with red, when we use the height of the chest at its highest point, it is from the pectoral girdle to the pelvic girdle, two and two thirds long. Okay, any more questions? Ooh, nice one. Nice one, Jack. Oh, Jack, uh, w w what kind of measurement techniques do you use? I'm, I'm interested. Also, let me turn that down. Ah, yeah, 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 uh, different reference points, yeah. Yeah, it um, the reference points basically change from animal to animal. Um, as you will see with the next creature. Because we will do Quetzalcoatlus. <coughs> and with this one... I would like to do something a little bit different. We will go, go over the, the different ratios and stuff, but in the end, it would be nice if you guys pose the creature yourself. You see Mark Witten here in his skeletal drawing has this wacky quad lift, um, quad lounge uh, pose, but that's of course uh, um, um, a, a pose that the animal would only use rarely in its life. Most of the time it would be in flight or in, on the ground. So the interesting uh, thing uh, about this, you can use it as reference, um, but it's not that user-friendly because it's in an unusual um, position. So knowing what you uh, uh, now know about measuring proportions, comes in very handy because you can take these measurements, these ratios between different elements of the skeleton and use them to repose your creature. For us dark kids, we again have a very wacky animal. Um, as a base measurement, I like to use the humerus. The humerus then can be measured against the torso torso which is a little over two humeri in length. And the torso, when we use the torso as a base measurement, is also the length of the femur and the femur or torso can be used as 
measurement for the lower leg here, which is roughly one and a half torso long and similar you have here the, the humerus again being one and a half uh, is, is the forearm being one and a half uh, humeri long then uh, you use a uh, humerus again and it is two and roughly two thirds humerus long so the meter um, the meter carpal here is a large one, and one meter the, this big meter carpal is the same length of the big um, first phalanx of uh, the wing finger, and all uh, and that basically is the same length as uh, the rest of the of the wing finger, or very very close to that. Then interesting is comparing having the torso size again with your skull. Because in Art's Dark Kids, um, the skull is usually two and a half torsos long. Oh, that's a little roughly like this. Two and a half torsos, extreme proportions. Not even modern birds are, are coming close to this. And then you can also use your torso um, for the neck. Which is, in this case, it differs among pterosaurs. Let's have a look. One, two, three torsos long. And having these ratios now, you can use them to draw the animal standing. So you might want to start out with your torso to give your animal a solid stand and then put in here at the front, uh, the joint for the your humerus. Put in your humerus, which goes a little bit over the, uh, the middle of sort of your torso. Then you put in your, basically again, the humerus length and then the half of the humerus length to have the forearm. And then, again, humerus length, humerus length, and half a humerus length or two thirds, it uh, differs probably a little bit. There's always individual variation and everything. Uh, and then you have the first, yeah, same length as the metacarpal. And then again, a little bit shorter than, than the first um, wing finger phalanx is the rest of the wing. And now you basically have the wing. You put in teeny tiny fingers at the end. Now you have the, f in the torso length again, and you have your uh, your femur, and then a longer part that is one and a half tors uh, torsi or torsos long, and you have bloop, bloop, you see here your lower leg. Putting in here the next leg and a tiny tiny tail. Also now putting in here the second wing to give it a little bit of depth. And now you have the torso. Length again, you give it one, two, three torso lengths and you have the neck. And now the skull, which is bizarrely two and a half torsos long. Look at the length of the torso again, or measure it again uh, if you are unsure with your pencil. One, two and a half, and you have your skull length with a long and slender beak. 
little crest on top, lower jaw. And a teeny tiny eye. And then you have it standing there menacingly. <coughs> Again, this is a sketch layer. I know. Because I know some people will take longer for this, I will draw over it with some more finished lines and you guys in the meantime can finish the rest. Oh, I forgot it in this time uh, in this case, but I will post again my reference in chat so you guys can look at it in more detail. This isn't my most pretty Quetzalcoatlus I have done. But it gets the idea across big muscles on the arms. And they're standing there. Okay. If you guys have questions, you can also post them now in chat. Talk stork. <laughs> ah, yes, the terror storks, indeed. Oh, it's not smiling. Let's let's put a smile on that face. Because it's learning. And it's blushing. Okay, if there are no more questions, let's go to the last creature of tonight. This is kind of a um, masterclass uh, thingy. Triceratops. Not in lateral view. I'm very sorry. <laughs> Let's have a look at this. We are only doing the skull. Because everything else would be suicide. Oh, and my 
It's better on my phone is low. Oh, putting in, whoop, there we go. Put in some cable. Yes, because I I prepared something for this, which is a lot. Um, I I can replicate a Triceratops skull like this without all these lines, but I think big part because many people don't really get um, Triceratops in 3D correct is because they don't. Um, measure out their proportions. If you don't have that experience with replicating stuff in 3D, you need to look at things and um, draw comparisons between different um, different part of your, uh, parts of your object and break it down. Otherwise it will um, always look wonky. As you can see here, I put a lot over this. Let's go over some of these things. The question with ceratopsians, especially ceratopsian skulls, and especially ceratopsian skulls in 3D is, where do you start? Um, and in this case, I would like to start with you guys in the middle, at the upper edge of the orbit uh, of the orbit this is where we start we put in the orbit and here is where we begin the drawing basically uh, it's a little bit unconventional but you can it's it's very difficult from this perspective especially to break down triceratops into simple into simple shapes like for example the frill that's that's not a circle you could put in there or or yes there is kind of a um it's it's kind of triangular what is going on here with the snout but also not really because it's also kind of boxy especially in profile so um doesn't really work so what you do is again you compare the length and width and everything to each other and you also look at the angles how things relate to each other in this case for example you look you put the eye in here and then you look okay where does the snout end and where does the frill end and then you see oh this is basically the same length so the skull length here is basically you can divide the wool skull into um the facial part of the skull and the frill. That's what we will do on a new layer or a new piece of paper. Putting in the orbit up here and then equal lengths on both sides. Uh, it's a little bit longer like that. Don't be afraid to erase and correct. Um, and now we have a look, okay, what, what else can we do with this? So, uh, like, where, um, uh, what is a good next thing um, you could look at? Uh, for example here you can, this half here, you can divide further into a half and then you have the front of the left brow horn and the upper edge of uh, the other orbit. And then in the middle of that, in a kind of a triangle you have the upper part of the skull. From there you can uh, put in your first brow horn 
which, as you can see here, is going over the edge of the of the snoot, but not by that much. Remember, we don't put on a keratin sheet on our Triceratops yet. So we have our first brow horn, which looks a little bit wonky right now, but that's okay. Um, next thing we could do, uh, looking at the half of this side. So towards the frill, we, we divide this further here and then we see that there is a line going down here up to our second brow horn and our and it's it's um there's this rim going around the eye we can also mark that in and it's basically going from that rim up here that's how far our brow horn goes. On the sides it's a little bit more difficult. Look at little cues in the bone for, for where to do the markings and um, we can now put in our second brow horn. You can see here that our first brow horn goes basically to the half, to uh, up here, to one half, and when we put that same length on top, we have the height of second brow horn. And when you go from this point of uh, the orbital rim here, or the, the edge of the first brow horn up, you have where it ends. You can, that's why you can now put in your second brow horn. Now we have two brow horns in. Way to go. Um, where could we go next? You can see here then that let's let's do the frill. Um, and I notice that I'm running out of space a little bit. Let's move that down. Um, let's put in uh, the frill goes not quite up to the, the brow horn it's a little bit below uh, but its highest part is basically also on the middle of the, the frill half so yeah, then we have here a little, little notch and then we go down towards the, the brow horn And we put in that part of the frill. This is it, it. It looks a little bit wonky. I'm not sure where I'm off. I think I made that a little bit too high. I think I made the point of the frill a little bit too high. Let's put it like this. For some reason, the width of my pencil changed. Uh, as you see here, the red line, this is the middle line. It's the middle line of the skull, which can be very helpful. Um, let's go down. Uh, when you look here, the, the top of, of the brow horn, the same length down and, and now I think I have to reduce the size of my yes I have to reduce the size of my layer uh, you see here wait let me erase that part that part of the frill is, is uh, bugging me there we go better uh, we go down a little bit less than, than the length again and then at an angle we have this part coming out um, when you then check the height of the frill 
down to the middle and then multiply that frill, uh, frill height you have the lower part of the frill you have this here this notch and then you complete the frill we have half a triceratops now these are truly triceratops um, when we now we want to put in the face of the triceratops so we go to the middle line again and here we have the middle of uh, at the at the uh, at the here at the corner of the eye of the second orbital rim and the line in between here we can divide and go down and here we have the tip of the brow horn uh, the, not the brow horn the, the nasal horn and that corresponds basically with in one line goes over here to this ridge here below the eye and ta -da, we have a nasal horn now we can also put in here this curvy midline Ah, a little bit more straight and we have our nasal horn um, and then again the half of, of that is basically where our beak ends so we make a rough curve down and you can now draw a straight line from the tip of your second brow horn here down to the, the eye until down here and then you have this all lines up with the lowest part of uh, your beak or the, 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 the hind part of the beak can also look um, at, a, at a nice diagonal from the rim let me draw this in ah here I have it on a different layer um, you, you see here a diagonal from from the rim of the frill down here so you can put that in It's not quite there but it gives you an indication and and it helps you to divide also in your in your head the skull into into shapes so adding the na massive nostril openings and from here on you're basically I have to make my layer a little bit layer larger Boop, 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 boop. There we go. Because it needs a little bit more down here. You put in the beak. Uh, and again, you, you can go further into detail. Like, I just because I'm so used to look at this beak and see this basic shape in it and I see like for example that this little corner here goes right through the middle uh, and and that's I, I automatically apply that so you can all what I showed you here you can apply that to every part of the skull Uh, on what layer? Ah, this layer. Zooming out a little bit again. Oop, wrong color. And then you. Ah, you have here your your middle line again, where it where we have the height of this notch. 
then you can put in all this crap. Putting in some more. Details. I'm. I'm now. Uh, let's. I'm. I'm putting just a new layer on top. Um, how about a little bit of flesh on that triceratops? Because now that you have your skull, you can actually go in and give it soft tissue. And stuff like. This middle line here on the skull gives you also an indication for the volume. Keratin sheet on top of your beak and your horns. Don't forget your keratin horns, horn sheets. Truly a triceratops. Okay. I think we are at an end. Oh, I should have also posted the skull in chat. Ida. Okay, I have to say this is how I do it. This is because I, for example, now put my, as my first reference point in the eye. You could you could use other reference points. This is totally up to you. The important part is that you have um, a base measurement you use to um, break down the proportions of your of your creature into comprehens uh, comprehensible um, units and that you uh, like like uh, skull lengths or the, the length of, of the tail with sauropods, for example, you can't use, or with, so, same with sauropods as with cotylorynchus, you can't use the skull as your base measurements because the uh, neck is just so long. Instead, you, you as with cotylorynchus, you best can use your torso length, um, and so on and so forth. I will probably put some more examples into chat later where you can try to replicate the proportions. Um, but this would be everything for this stream. I will also upload this later on YouTube. Maybe with cutting out the first few minutes because that was just rambling on. And um, yeah, after I stop streaming, uh, we opening, I open it up to uh, the discussion. People uh, can post their stuff in chat. Uh, you guys can ask more questions and we can go over your sketches and uh, look at what you can improve um, and uh, how um, we can continue this series. Okay, this would be everything for tonight. Let's quickly go over the little sketches we did. With Triceratops. Oops. Quetzalcoatlus. 
Cotyledonius and Demetrodon. Thank you all for watching.